remain seated. Court is back in session. People of the state of Michigan versus Erin McGill. Good morning, Your Honor. Elena Rosek on behalf of the people, P78815. Good morning, Your Honor. Michael McCarthy, P30169, appearing on behalf of and with uh, Aaron Samira Phil. Mr. Phil is standing next to me at the uh, council table. We are ready to proceed with preliminary examination. Your Honor, we would ask for an order of sequestration in this case. I've already um, sequestered two of our witnesses, and I believe defense counsel is aware of those two witnesses who are family members that may testify at a later date. Um, if anyone else in this case uh, comes into the courtroom that needs to be sequestered, I would just ask that we make sure that that's done. Your Honor, there are no defense witnesses present, at least none of which I am aware of. Ms. Rosick and I have discussed the sequestration of the other witnesses. I join in her motion. All right. Anyone that may testify at a later date in this case must leave the courtroom at this time. Everybody is okay. And I would ask for an exception for the officer in charge who is seated next to me, which is Sergeant Dean Jean Derwick. No objection. Granted. Thank you, Your Honor. And the people are ready to proceed. We would call our first witness, which is Gina Brayman. Just step all the way up to the witness chair. Should you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give should be the truth of the matter, so help you God? Yes. We can have a seat. And just state and spell your name for the record. My name is Gina Brayman, spelled G-I-N-A. Last name is B-R-A-Y-M-A-N. Good morning, Ms. Brayman. I'm going to ask you some questions regarding an incident um, where on May 5th of 2021, around 4.40 a.m. Can you tell me, were you working on that day? Yes, I was. And how are you employed? Uh, through the city of Dearborn Heights. And what specifically is your job title? Uh, civilian dispatcher or communication officer. Okay, and just make sure you keep your voice up for me so we can all hear you, please. <coughs> Thank Sorry. you. And um, does that translate into a 911 operator as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And specifically, were you working in that capacity on this date? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, how long have you been a 911 dispatcher for? For this department for 22 and a half years. Okay. Um, did you receive a phone call on this May 4th, 2021, around 4.40 a.m. at the location of 5364 Party, and that's P-A-R-D-E-E, -E, in the city of Dearborn Heights? Yes, ma'am. And what was the... Give me just one moment if you... I'm sorry, I, I apologize. This was on May 4th of 2021. Is that correct, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And were you working on that day? Yes, I was. And did you receive a call for a location of 5364 Party, and that's P-A-R-D-E-E, -E, in the city of Dearborn Heights? Yes, ma'am. And how did you know that it was for that address? We, it's an alley system from when you call 911, it pops up the, a name and an address if it's a landline. And in this situation, was this a landline? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and do you recall what the name was for the landline? I do apologize if I forgot the last name. That's okay. Um, now, did you have a phone call conversation with somebody? Yes, I did. Was that person male or female? Male. And what was the uh, conversation regarding? He had called to let me know that he had uh, killed his mom. Okay. Are these calls recorded? Yes, they are. And is that done in the regular course of um, the business of being a 911 operator? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did you, is that something that the police officers have access to? If you know? Yeah, I mean, at the time of the, time of the call, yeah, they could come in the dispatch room. If not, then we have a records department that can pull it. Okay. 
Now, while you're on the phone with uh, the individual that you're speaking with, what are you doing specifically? I, once I get the information, I start typing it into the computer system, which is uh, Columbus, so that it, uh, you can dispatch out the runs. Okay, and is there anyone else working with you? Yes, ma'am. I had another dispatcher with me. And what is the other dispatcher's duty on this evening? L'Oreal Reed. Okay, and uh, what was her job that night? Her job was dispatching the police department. Okay, are you ever talking to the police officers? At that time? Right. No. Okay. I was on the phone the whole time. And give me just one moment. Prior to coming into court today, did you have an opportunity to listen to this 911 call that we're referring to? Uh, partial. Okay. And was it in fact the call that you had with the individual at 5364 Party? Yes, ma'am. Okay. At this time, the people would move for the admission of people's proposed exhibit number one, which is the 911 call for this um, incident. No objections for purposes of preliminary examination. Okay, and it will actually be people's proposed exhibit number eight. And your honor, may I publish for the court at this time? Yes. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And is one of them you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and is the other one the male voice that you were referring to? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. How did you kill your mom?
Did you stay on the phone the entire time until the police arrived? Yes. Okay. And how did you know the police were there? Because they were arriving on the, the dispatcher was arriving them as they were getting on scene. And the person working with you that was dispatching that evening is in the same room as you, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, just one moment, Erin. I have nothing further for this witness. Thank you. I have a question for this witness. The witness may step down. And Your Honor, the people have another witness who is police officer Esposito. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Just state and spell your name. Police Officer Jacob Esposito, E S P O S I T O. And good morning, sir. Could you please tell us how you're employed? Uh, police officer for the city of Durham Heights. How long have you been employed in that capacity? Uh, about seven years. And did you, were you working on the night of, or morning of May 4th, 2021, around 4.40 in the morning? Yes, ma'am. Were you working alone or with a partner? With a partner. And who was your partner that day? Uh, police officer Nick O'Donnell. Okay. And um, on that specific day, what were your, were, are you a road patrol officer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and were you dispatched to a location of 5364 Party in the city of Dearborn Heights? Yes, ma'am. What was your purpose for going to that location? Uh, we received a dispatch run there for someone that stated they had just uh, killed their mother. Okay, and when you arrived at the location, was there anyone else on scene yet? Uh, we arrived the same time as another patrol car. Do you recall who was in the other patrol vehicle? Uh, police officers Jasmine and Glowacki. Okay. Now, when you got to the location, what's the first thing you observed? I uh, observed a male standing just inside the storm door of the house. And do you see that person in the courtroom today? I do. Could you point to them and indicate something they're wearing? Uh, the male in the green shirt. The okay. Mascot. Let the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant in this matter. No. Thank you. And at the time that you responded to the location, did you have a name for any individuals? Um, I don't recall if they had given us names or not when we responded. Okay. Um, once you see the individual at the storm door, what do you guys do? Or what do you do? Uh, we ask the male to step out of the house. Okay. And does anyone place him under arrest? Yes. Do you recall who? Uh, Officer Jasmine. Okay. Once the defendant is under arrest, uh, what's the next thing you do? Uh, my partner and I entered the home. Okay. And bless you. Now, um, when you enter this home, can you describe what's the first thing once you get inside of the house that you see? Um, I could see down the hallway, and there was a door that was kind of... Um, like leaning against the door frame, and I could see a foot just past the, like the edge of the door. Was that the first thing that drew your attention? Yes. Okay, and prior to getting into that bedroom, is there other rooms along the hallway that you're referring to? Yes, ma'am. Did you check in any of those rooms? I looked in them as I walked past. Okay, what was your purpose for doing that? Uh, just to see if there was anyone else in the, it, anyone else in the home. Okay, did you find anyone else inside of the home? I did not. Now, when you go to this other room where you indicated that there was a door kind of off uh, the frame, um, what kind of room was this? Uh, bedroom. All right. And what did you see when you went inside of the bedroom? 
uh, there was a female laying on the floor. Um, and there, in, it looked like there had been a struggle in the room. Okay. This female, did anything stand out about or about her to you? Um, she appeared to be uh, deceased for, I mean, I, I'm not sure how long, but not recently, not very recently. Okay. And what made you believe that? Um, just the, the amount of bruising on her. Um, I could see ligature mark on her neck and um, like dried blood around her mouth and then also lividity setting in in some of her appendages. Okay. Now, once you go to the bedroom, is anybody else with you? Uh, my partner was with me. And what do you do once you're inside of the room? Uh, once we entered the room and observed these things, we pretty much finished clearing the house and then we went back outside. Okay, and I know you keep referring to we, I'm gonna ask you what you did, okay? Okay. So um, you helped secure the rest of the house, is that correct? I did. And did you find anyone else inside? No ma'am. Did you find any other rooms that had anything significant that stood out to you? No ma'am. Okay. Did you, um, as part of your duties that evening, did you secure the scene uh, for any of the other officers? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and as part of doing that, what did you, what does securing the scene mean to you? Um, we had everybody go back outside and wait outside the house um, and wait for the detective bureau to arrive. Okay, were you still on scene, uh, or while you were on scene, did you observe any evidence technicians come to the location that would have photographed the scene? Yes. Okay, and were you still there when this happened? I was. All right, and um, do you recall about how long after you responded to the location before the evidence text came? Mm, maybe, maybe an hour or so, an hour or two, maybe. Okay, and now, Your Honor, if I may approach the witness. Yes. I'm handing you what has been marked as People's Proposed Exhibits number two through seven. Could you take a look through those and tell me if you recognize them? Yes, ma'am, I do recognize them. Okay, and I would like the record to reflect, too, that um, I have shown the defense attorney these exhibits prior to um, court today. That is correct, Your Honor, and for, the, uh, for purposes of preliminary examination, I have no objection to the admission of exhibit numbers uh, two through seven. Thank you. So admitted, Your Honor? Are you uh, yes, Your Honor, I am moving to admit the exhibits two through seven. Exhibits two through seven are admitted at this time. Thank you. And how do you recognize those photos? Uh, they're photographs of the scene at the party. Okay. Now, do those photographs, looking at them right now, do they fairly and accurately depict what you saw when you were at the location around 440 in the morning on May 4th, 2021? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, looking at People's Exhibit Number 2 specifically, um, can you tell me what is depicted in that photograph? Uh, a door that is off the hinges and resting against uh, like a wall, a dresser. Um, and then you can see into the entryway of the room, you can see the rug is kicked up. There's some stuff that's knocked over. There's a chair in the middle of the room, kind of askew. Okay, and did you or your partner move any of those items inside of the room after entering the location? No, ma'am. Okay. And um, in People's Exhibit number three, can you tell me what is that? Uh, the part of the door where the hinge mounts. Okay, and does it look damaged to you at all? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and um, can you look at People's Exhibit number four and tell me what that is a picture of? A um, little bit further back picture of the door with the the hinge mounting area and then the screws from the hinge on the floor. Okay, and again, in any of these photographs, did you move anything inside of that room? No, ma'am. Okay, 
And may I publish for the court, Your Honor? And now, in People's Exhibit Number Two, you indicated that you saw the door that was off the hinge cracked, and that you also saw a chair inside of the room. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, now, you indicated that you also observed a, a body inside of that room. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Did you know who this person was prior to going to this location? Um. Yes, I. I knew that it was. The defendant's uh, mother. Okay, how did you know that? Um, I had dealt with them once previously, uh, a couple of years ago. I'm going to pose an objection at this time regarding any similar acts of other acts. And Your Honor, I won't be asking as to what the incident was in which he knew her. I'm just asking as to had he ever known her previously to this um, incident for identification purposes. And he's already answered that question. I have no objection to that. Thank you. Um, now, there are three other photographs. If you can take a look at People's Exhibit Number Five, I believe. And can you tell me what's depicted in that photograph? Um, it's a picture of the other angle, of the other side of the bedroom. Um, you can see that there's another, uh, like a nightstand, like table tipped over, um, the rug flipped up, and then uh, the deceased on the on the floor there. Okay, and how was the deceased dressed that evening when you got to the location? Um, she had a nightgown on covering the upper half of her body. Okay, and from the waist down, how did she appear? Uh, undressed. Okay, and in this photograph, is there a um, ink spot across the area where there would have been genitals exposed? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now when you walked in, where specifically, when you saw the deceased body, where did you see injuries? Um, I noticed that around her mouth there was dried blood. Um, she had bruises on most of her body, her arms. There were some bruises on her legs. She had a very deep, uh, like dark red ligature mark around her neck. Okay. Did you see anything in the um, close proximity of the deceased that... Um, Specifically, let me ask you this. Did you see any sort of cords that were in the vicinity of the de uh, deceased? Yes, ma'am. And what kind of cord was that, if you recall? Um, it was a black, it looked like a phone charger, a black cord uh, next to, I believe, the left side of her head. And is that depicted in People's Exhibit Number 5? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then um, People's Exhibit Number 6, if you can take a look at that and tell me what that's a photograph of. Um, Close-up photograph of the deceased uh, face. Okay, and so this is a zoomed in photograph, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then what about in People's Exhibit Number 7? Uh, a photograph of the uh, deceased neck. Okay, and is that a zoomed in photograph of the neck? Yes, ma'am. Okay, was she wearing, did she have anything on her neck when you got to the location? Um, just a necklace that was on her neck, but you could barely kind of see it. Okay. Part of you that last part was on her neck? Uh, it was... You can only see a small part of it that was on her neck. And was there anything on her face that drew your attention? Uh, there was a plastic bag, like kind of half on her face, just on one side. Okay. And when you got to the location, it was only half on her face. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If I may publish um, people's five through seven to the court. Yeah. Now, you've indicated that um, in looking at the photographs that there were some, a, a table that was knocked over, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And how did the room in general appear to you? It appeared that there had been a struggle. Things looked disheveled and like knocked over. Okay. Was there any other blood anywhere else in the, in the vicinity that you saw? I, I don't recall. I don't recall specifically to say. Did you observe any weapons? I did not. Okay. Did you collect any evidence from this location? Uh, I myself did not. Okay. And um, is there anything else that you did at this location after securing the scene? No, ma'am. Okay. Just one moment, Your Honor. 
Nothing further from this witness, Chairman. Thank you. Good morning, Officer Esposito. Uh, my yes, name sir. is Michael McCarthy. I represent uh, the defendant in this case, uh, Aaron uh, Akel. And I just have a couple of questions to ask you here this morning regarding your testimony. And if I don't make myself clear, please tell me that, then I'll rephrase the question, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, you were, you and your partner, uh, Officer O'Donnell, were the first officers on the scene, but then another car arrived immediately after you. Is that correct? Uh, they arrived just before us, but we, oh. went, but we got there at about the same time. You and your partner, Officer O'Donnell, were the officers that actually entered the house? Yes, sir. Okay. The other officers took charge of Mr. Eckel? Yes, sir. And uh, when did you observe Mr. Eckel leave the house through the front door? I did. And that was at direction of either yourself or one of the other officers on the scene, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Would you describe his behavior at that point as being cooperative with the police officers? Yes, sir. When you went into this house and, and saw uh, the decedent in this bedroom, uh, you mentioned uh, the ligature mark on her neck. And then you mentioned also later in your testimony the um, phone charger that you saw. I, I believe it was a phone charger. Okay, some cord that would be rather thin, is that correct? Yes, sir. How lengthy of the cord was it, if you can recall? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I didn't examine it to see how long it was. Or was it? Let me ask you this: Was it um, laying flat out, like it fully extended, or was it sort of coiled up or, or in a bunch? Uh, it looked like there was just a single loop, like okay. it was just kind of bound over just once. When you say a single loop, you mean a, a loop in which uh, the, the ends had been crossed so that it could be pulled into a knot? Um, no, more of like. The two sides ran together, like if you had both ends here and then kind of made it into like a U, I guess, if that okay. makes sense. Thank you. Um, and you indicated in your direct testimony that you thought that these injuries that you observed had were not fresh. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, so that is based upon... And if you could just go through this with me so I get a clear understanding of your testimony... Uh, your observations, were there any contusions or marks on the face of the decedent that you observed? Yes, sir. Were those um, bruises um, darkened? Uh, a little bit, yes. Okay. You mentioned lividity. Where did you observe lividity? Uh, on, like, her arms and her legs. Okay. The, ba so the backs of her legs. Okay, very good. So this would be on the underside, the part that was um, touching the floor. Well, al along the side, I guess I should, along the sides of her legs towards the bottom. Okay. And that term lividity, how, how would you define that? Uh, the pooling of blood. Very good. And just so we understand what the term is. And so you saw that, and that indicated to you that the body had been there for some time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, you're not a medical doctor or anything like that, but obviously... From your testimony, you are familiar with seeing people who have sustained injuries, correct? Yes, yes sir. And you use the term ligature, so you're familiar with strangulation-type injuries, correct? Yes, sir. And in the course of your, I believe you said seven years as a police officer, approximately uh, seven years, have you responded to other homicide scenes? I have not. Okay. So this lividity that you observed was how did you gain the experience in order to be able to make that notation? Um, though I have never responded to other homicides, I have responded to other uh, deceased person calls or um, calls of that nature. Okay, so you've seen a dead body at a place to which you responded. Yes, sir. And somehow during the course of your years as an officer, you've come to have an understanding of that term and, uh, and what exactly it means. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Now, you mentioned one other thing, and that had to do with some markings around the decedent's mouth, and I didn't follow that exactly. Could you describe that one more time, please? Um, it, it appeared that there was dried blood, like, all the way around her mouth, and then kind of almost like, um, 
an abrasion type mark on I, I can't recall which side of her like chin area below her bottom lip but oh. there was kind of like an abrasion mark there okay also. thank you um, did you I know you were asked I, I, or whether you saw any weapons yes sir. and the answer was no my question is a little bit more broad uh, following up on that was there any kind of an object that you saw not a gun or a baseball bat but any kind of an object that appeared to you in that room at least when you were doing your preliminary investigation that could have been used as a as some sort of a weapon if you recall I, I guess could you ask a little more sure. specifically well one thing that you observed was this uh, phone charger or whatever it is but this cord yes uh, did you see any other what we might consider to be innocuous items that appeared to be weapons uh, or objects that could be used as weapons in that room. Um, the bag that was half on okay. her face. Um, mm -hmm. There was a chair that was in the middle of the room. I mean, it, a chair could, have, it could be a weapon, um, but that I didn't see anything else that appeared obviously to be a weapon or had been used as a weapon to my knowledge. Okay, thank you. Yes, I have no further questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Witness face. And Your Honor, the people do have one more exhibit. It's people's exhibit number one that I do believe we have a stipulation to with defense counsel. It's the ME report. Your Honor, that is a correct statement. I will stipulate the admission of uh, the second Dr. Lokman's son's uh, autopsy report for purposes of preliminary examination. I've seen it by review. Right. And Your Honor, at this time I would uh, like to move for the admission of that exhibit, People's Exhibit Number One. Exhibit One will be admitted. Thank you. And uh, just for the record, this is a medical examiner's report from Dr. Lokman, that's L-O-K-M-A-N Sung, S-U-N-G, who is the assistant medical examiner for the Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office. This is a post-mortem report and it was authored and signed by Dr. Sung on May 5th of 2021. And just in um, for purposes of the exam, I would like to read the summary and opinion into the record. It's a brief, um, about a paragraph or two. It says, it is my opinion that that death was caused by multiple blunt force trauma and strangulation. Injuries from blunt force trauma included bruises to the right and left eyes, right shoulder, right upper arm, left breast, left flank, back of the left upper arm, left elbow, left forearm, left wrist, left hand, and right foot. A series of four ill-defined contusions were on the anterior left upper arm that had the distribution of a grasping hand. Abrasions were on the nose, right forehead, left upper eyelid, right cheek, right chin, left breast, left back, right and left forearms, and right hand. Internally, there were confluent bleeding underlying the scalp that extended from the right frontal scalp to the left temporal scalp. There was bleeding of the right temporal muscle and extensive bleeding, and in parentheses it says a word that I'm going to spell, S-U-B-A-R-A-C-H-N-O-I-D and subdural, end parentheses, on the surface of the brain. Injuries consistent with strangulation were exemplified by numerous abrasions on the right surface of the neck and chest. A neck dissection identified bleeding in strap muscles of the neck. There were numerous petechiae on both eyes. Lacerations and bruising of the lips were also present. The manner of death is homicide. And Your Honor, if I may publish for the court. At this time, the people have no further witnesses. Your Honor, the defense will not present any evidence at this hearing, and so your defense rests. Right. And Your Honor, the people would motion this court to bind over the defendant on count one, homicide murder in the first degree, which is premeditated, and the habitual offender second offense notice, and we would reserve argument for rebuttal. Your Honor, I believe that the 
Thank you. I'm going to stand up and go straight towards the story. Step over to the side for a second. 